So if your shipment obviously fills a full trailer, full truckload would be the way to go. Uh, truckload service can uh, sometimes be more cost effective than a volume service. Uh, your volume service um, may not be the best if you have a deadline. So if it's a hard deadline, you may be better off to go truckload uh, where you're not relying on that LTL carrier to get it through, you know, two, three different terminals in route. It's just going to pick up from point A and go to point B. If it's a longer distance, we can look at team service. So you have a few more options there to, to help meet deadlines. If it's not a particularly big shipment, then you can look at the hot shots or spinner vans, or you can look at the full truckload if um, it's a larger shipment. Also, if it's a fragile uh, product, something that uh, the less handling the better, sometimes truckload may be the way to go. Keep in mind when you're shipping something in LTL, how many times that product is handled. It's picked up at your dock, it's then unloaded at the uh, carrier's terminal, and then depending on how far it's going, uh, it could go through, you know, just one if it's from here to Chicago, but if it's going across country, it could hit several different terminals along the way and be loaded and unloaded several different times. So it could be handled several times, which just increases the chance for uh, damage. Uh, when rates, when it comes to full truckload service, uh, they're often transactional um, or going off the spot market. If, it, uh, if there are higher volumes in play or it's gonna be a steady volume, uh, contracted rates are definitely available. We do have some customers with uh, contracted rates on the truckload side, and we have others that are on spot rates. It just kind of depends on what best fits your uh, business. Available capacity for the truck market. Um, it can be affected by season, uh, produce season, uh, produce season is going on in the southeast right now. Uh, it will be uh, also hits the California and South Texas areas pretty hard. So these uh, these seasonal um, swings definitely affect the availability of drivers in the full market in the full truckload market. Natural disasters obviously can affect the uh, truckload as well as uh, strikes. If you have a port strike or uh, auto worker strike and, and you're delivering automotive plants, it can affect it there. Um, then we have load requirements that will affect the rates, hazmat and tanker endorsements. So that is a added endorsement the drivers have to have on their driver's license. Uh, so therefore it's, a, it's usually an extra cost. Um, there's fewer of those drivers available. And then the team drivers, obviously you're paying two drivers versus one um, for the shipment there. Um, one thing on the tanker endorsements, um, Tanker endorsement, uh, the shipments can be tanker endorsed and not hazmat, or they can be hazmat and tanker endorsed. The tanker endorsement is determined by how many gallons you're shipping and the size of container that it's in. And that will affect, that will determine whether a tanker endorsement is, uh, is needed. Um, I've got two questions in regards to hazmat items. Mm -hmm. um, one is, uh, what's your policy for hazmat items? And then the other question is, what is the weight limit for requiring hazmat endorsements? So on the weight limit, it's uh, below 1,000 pounds. You are generally not required to, uh, to have the shipment uh, placarded. And then on the, what was that? What is your policy for we, hazmat we items? Can definitely help set up uh, in uh, hazmat shipments. Uh, we usually like to receive the MSPS for the shipment so we have uh, a good description of exactly what we're dealing with, know what placards are required. That way we can let the carriers know there. Okay.